Kiora people, we are at Manukau Institute of Technology in Auckland on this beautiful day with the lovely Dr. Deborah, who's the head of nursing. Um, and um, you were also a chair of the Nursing Council of New Zealand. So obviously, plethora of experience. We're really pleased that you're talking to us today, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to um, highlight the beautiful school that we have here and the fantastic facilities. So really excited that we're able to talk to you and um, give you some insight to what we do here at MIT. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Tell us where, where are we sitting right now? Because we are at the MIT campus. What's this lab about? So in uh, the lab behind us um, is a lab where the uh, tawira, the students come and do their laboratory skills. Um, they do dissections, uh, they do microbiology here, um, do some fantastic stuff with um, our scientists. We have a, a team of scientists that actually work at MIT and teach the tawira, the students, um, microbiology skills and also um, health and safety uh, skills around the human body and what they do and also um, how the human body works. So you can see some, um, you know, some artifacts around here that actually have um, the ability to be um, broken up so that uh, students can actually learn how the human body works and um, what it looks like inside the human body. Brilliant. Um, we are, I do want to spend some time talking about the courses. Um, but also what's really in the courses, because that's not an information that's readily available. So I know that um, MIT's got the Bachelor's of Nursing degree program. Correct. For those nurses that are overseas qualified, there's the Competence Assessment Program. Yes. I do want to touch very quickly on the Enrolled Nursing Program that hasn't started yet, but is in the making for uh, a next intake to come shortly. Tell us what is so unique about studying nursing at MIT. Look, you know, there's a, a number of different providers around New Zealand and um, in central Auckland, but one of the things that I'm really proud of of MIT is that we have the cultural awareness and cultural competency that goes alongside the, the nursing degree. So when we produce AFI um, nurses to the end of their career in terms of their study that they've done for the three years or 18 months if they're doing the enrolled nursing course is that they come out not only clinically competent but they come out culturally competent and that's a point of difference that we have at MIT which no other institution in Auckland actually has so uh, that's completely brilliant. different um, kaupapa so completely different thing that we do here in, t in terms of teaching our students around how to look after people within the community that we serve um, we have a, a wide range of ethnic groups within our community and you know obviously when they go into hospital they're not going to be able, you know just looking after one ethnic group it's about how do they actually interface and um, put their nursing practice um, I guess on the patients when they're actually looking after them how, how do they actually um, integrate that with the care that they deliver that them? is which I is think, really really important I think, I think that is really important that segues me quite nicely into sort of what I was talking about you um, with you offline that there's a lot of students that you know want to get into nursing because mm -hmm. their friends have done it and because they, you know they find it interesting and they'll find all these pathways but it does take a person of a certain kind mm -hmm. to become a good nurse because it's not a career that you you know you change after you've done your degree programs mm -hmm. um, and you've kind of talked about that cultural you know differences and point of differences that come with them being a student here do you have any advice to those students that are looking at getting into nursing and you know taking this up as a career with what th what kind of challenges they will face? What does this career look like? Look, you know, nursing, um, from the time I started nursing, um, nursing is changing rapidly. Um, the responsibilities and the roles that nurses have are just exponentially growing, um, which is absolutely exciting and fantastic. But you know, it's about resilience and it's about being able to be adaptable. Um, in the environment that you're in. Um, you know, some of our tawira, our students that come through get really anxious, but one of the skills that we teach them is how to, um, I guess, adapt, but also how to manage situations that they feel out of control in. So, you know, for any tawira or student that comes in that actually thinks that they don't have the skills that they need, actually we can teach them. We can help them grow into those skills. So, you know, if you've got a passion to want to help people, to people to support them and their health and wellness then this is the career for you so those of you that are listening to this I know that some of you would be finishing your schools and would be looking at sort of you know what do I really want to do as a career then there'll be the others um, that have possibly looking at changing your careers um, and I think the interesting thing that last year's taught us 
is that lots of people are actually considering putting a reset button on their careers. We know Absolutely. people that have done, you know, that have got business backgrounds, they came here to study something else, and they've realized that, you know, that's not what they really want to do. Um, so I, I know we spoke about this, but there's a lot of people that are looking at changing their careers. Is nursing an option for them, or do they have to start off with other foundation programs, or can they get into the degree straight away? Can you just talk to us about that? Yeah, absolutely. Look, you know, we take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, you know, certainly COVID has really changed a lot of people with regards to the current career that they had before COVID um, came along. We've had a number of um, people that have come from in New Zealand, a number of people that have been accountants or business people. Um, you know, we put them through a test, a diagnostic test, um, and sometimes we can transfer some of those skills that they've had on um, the diagnostic test um, to actually up them into nursing. So, you know, really it's a case by case basis. So some people think actually, you know, they've been a plumber and actually they can't get into nursing. But in actual fact, you know, when we put them through the diagnostic test, it actually demonstrates to us and shows us and to them that actually, you know, nursing's for them. Brilliant. Um, also there's, you know, if, if they have done other degrees, there is what we call a uh, cross credit or an RPL that we can actually look at in terms of uh, shifting some of those credits into the nursing program. Thank you. Dr. Deborah, I do want to talk about what happens in the degrees that these students do. So, um, you know, we've talked about the bachelors of nursing, we've talked about, we were just talking about clinical placements. Mm. Tell us what do these placements look like? How long are they spending on these placements and are they going out and finding this? Is mm. MIT putting them with placements? Mm. Explain to us how it works. Really great question and, and quite a lengthy answer, <laughs> but um, I know that we don't have time to go into all the detail of it. But just kind of briefly to give you an overview, we have a dedicated team that actually place our students in clinical placements. We have um, MOUs, so Memorandum of Understanding and Clinical Access Agreements to the DHBs um, in Central Auckland um, and also outside of Central Auckland. But also we have links with the community. So the clinical placements are made up of uh, acute care and secondary care, so primary care and secondary care. So there's a mixture that they have to complete when they're in the program, and uh, part of that is giving them that holistic experience, um, both with secondary and primary care. Brilliant. Um, for those of you that are overseas nurses and you're registered, there is a competence assessment program. Most of you would know about this, it's really popular. But I do want to tell you before I ask Deborah the question that if you are looking at enrolling in this course and you are overseas, you do need to go through a licensed advisor or a lawyer or someone that's exempt. You cannot use a student agent. You can do it yourself, your visa process, but you cannot go to a student agent. So that's um, something that you do need to understand and remember. Um, tell us very quickly, what is the duration of the CAP courses at MIT? So we have a, a CAP course which uh, runs for 12 weeks so um, they have um, a series of time in class where they do the academic components um, and then the rest of it is clinical. Um, if they don't make the um, required uh, competencies within the 12 weeks then they can get additional time but most of the um, students Tawira, that come through it takes them about kind of six to eight weeks um, to understand the New Zealand system and, and uh, complete their competencies. So, you know, they, there is a little bit of lenience within the uh, time frame that we give them in order for them to complete their competencies. You know, it's, it's a huge thing when, um, you know, you go from one country to another country and, you know, culturally it's a bit of a cultural kind of shock um, and, and we try and walk them through that and walk alongside them with that. Thanks. Um, there is also another program that we will be talking about shortly in the next few sessions. That's the New Zealand Diploma in Enrolled Nursing. Mm -hmm. We're looking at starting that at MIT shortly in the final stages, so watch out that space. What does that course actually do? Mm -hmm. they'll, um, they'll come out as an enrolled nurse? Correct. Still registered? Yes, that's right. Absolutely. So when you sit the state final in New Zealand uh, with the Nursing Council of New Zealand, obviously you become a uh, enrolled nurse or a registered nurse, um, exactly the same as what any other institution has. Really exciting to see the enrolled nursing um, career force developing um, and more and more enrolled nurses are coming out and being employed in the DHBs but also in the community as well which is really exciting. Absolutely fantastic having a conversation with you. We will have more details and register your interest if you are keen to pursue this career. Thank you for joining us. Thank you and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.